the French are back and Eugene are also back from their holidays. And that means only one thing, a dev blog from the French side of Bessier, the new Warno update slash milestone, whatever you want to call it. And here they are presenting the upcoming first French division, Sanken Division Blende. Now I apologize to the French for my bad pronunciation there. I will be from now on calling it by its English name, the 5th Armoured Division. The final bit of news is that we will also be getting the first map that is set outside of daytime. It will be twilight. So we're finally getting something that is basically nighttime. Near enough-ish, anyway. But first, let's get into the detail of the devlog. So first up, who is Bessier? Well, as ever, the milestone is named after a known Napoleonic general, Jean-Baptiste Bessier. He had a long and distinguished military career as a commander, getting his first taste of combat during the French Revolution in 1792, before fighting against the Spanish during the War of the Pyrenees. Coming under Napoleon's command, he rose the ranks, receiving more important postings along the way. During the Napoleonic Wars, Bessier was promoted to Marshal of the Empire. According to some of his rivals, this could solely be contributed to his friendship with Napoleon. As a cavalry leader, he commanded the prestigious Imperial Guard Cavalry and was decisive in numerous battles. On the other hand, he had his fair share of controversy on the battlefield and off, and he almost dueled with a rival commander, Lanne, during the Battle of Aspern Isling. Like any true cavalryman, he died in combat, struck by a cannonball while conducting reconnaissance during the Battle of Lutzen in 1813. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get on with the 5th Armoured Division. Formed in World War II, the then French North African 5th Armoured Division came to liberate its homeland, having landed in southern France during Operation Dragoon in summer of 1944. Later, it played an essential role in the capture of Stuttgart in 1945. The 5th Armoured Division would continue to have a German link being stationed in West Germany, Landau, for the duration of the Cold War, where it became part of the French forces in Germany, the FFG. More precisely, the division served in the 2nd Corps d'Armée, considered the FFG's frontline formation. The strategic position of France during the Cold War was a significant influencing factor for the Soviet war plans. With the withdrawal of France from NATO's integrated military command structure in the 1960s, a substantial part of the friendly forces allocated to the southern flank of Sentag was also removed. However, French troops were closely aligned with their NATO counterparts. It was determined that during a crisis, French reinforcements would rapidly deploy to help the American and West German forces defend against the Warsaw Pact defensive. The next little heading is Size Does Matter, a disclaimer on the size of French divisions. They were much smaller than other NATO divisions, barely a brigade or regiment in reality. Representing the French in Warno would prove to be a challenge if either they kept it to a division, or equally if they supersized it to a corpse level, then it would be far too big. So instead they have decided to stick with the single division format, but with a few additional corpse forces attached to beef it up. As such, the 5th Armoured Division, as an armoured division specifically, will have more expensive tank slots offset by more balanced unit availability in other categories, such as anti-air. You could say that the 5th Armoured Division might not be the hardest hitting armoured division, but as a whole it is more balanced thanks to the versatility of its units. So enough with all of that, let's get on to the really important stuff. What can you expect in the game? So logistics wise, you'll be getting access to a choice of the P4 PC Jeep, the VAB PC Wield and the AMX 10 PC tracked armoured vehicles for command. Supply units come as the TRM 2000 truck or the Puma Kangaroo helicopter. Over on the infantry side, you will have the option of 8-man chasseur squads in an AMX 10P infantry fighting vehicle and 10-man Grenadier Voltigers in VAB APCs. All squads carry a mix of FAMAS assault rifles, ANF-1 medium machine guns and LRAC F1AT weapons. Each infantry type brings its command variant with the Grenadier Voltigers also coming with the heavy a pilas format. Both the VAB and AMX 10P can be deployed in a vanilla and Milan versions, with the former also sporting the T-20-13 autocannon variant, which you'll be very familiar with from Wargame, I'm sure. 
Continuing with the infantry category, the division will further contain the Milan 1 and 2 ATGMs, the Prevote Grenams, Sapper Engineer Squads with older MAT 49 SMGs and MAS 4956 rifles, Reservists also with older smaller arms, Group and Chair with two APILAS and Commandos fielding the SIG. 543 and FN Minimi squad automatic weapons. Artillery wise, the artillery forces will be featuring the 120mm mortar, which is towed, a self propelled VAB PM81 mortar, and more powerful AMX ALF 1 155mm self propelled gun. Slots are more generous compared to other armoured divisions. Artillery spam for this division then. Moving on to the tanks, which are normally the mainstay of any tank division, I suppose. However, here they're a little bit more lax, which is why things are probably being jiggled around a bit. So the main battle tank is the AMX 30B2, a very lightly armoured. It also lacked a stabiliser. In turn, it is very fast and can count on very accurate rounds. Think of this tank as a glass cannon. You will get one card of an older variant, as well as one card of a more modern variant, the older is the AMX 30B with only heat rounds, but it is very cheap, and the newer version, the AMX 30B2 Brennus with ERA reactive armor bricks. To stay in the appropriate time frame, this latter variant should have actually been called in game the Geo LFE, which was the first ERA experiment. The Brennus name was only made official post-1990, but since the Gulf War hasn't taken place in our time frame, for ease of understanding we went with the later designation instead. Continuing with the tank tab, commanders can also deploy various ATGM carriers such as the P4 Milan 2 on the Bab Mephisto and the AMX-10 Hot. The latter two both featuring Hot 2 missiles. Slot costs in the tank category are more expensive than other armoured divisions. It includes the rare engineering AMX-30 EBG with its demolition gun. So something that's going to kill infantry I guess. On the recon side of things, this category will include the Eclairs, deployable in a choice of the Alouette 3, the P4 Jeep or the VLRA 50 light truck, with the latter also being a recon transport itself. Dedicated recon vehicles include the AMX-10 VOA, the VAB Rasset with the radar similar to the West German Fuchs Rasset, also the AMX-10 RC and the AMX-10 RC Sublende Heavy Recon. This latter variant receives more armor but loses its amphibious capa- wait what? Amphibious capability? The game doesn't have amphibious units yet. Is that a hint? Is that a mistake? Did you put that in with a big surprise coming in this patch? Oh, Mad Matt. Was that you who wrote that? Have you just let the cat out of the bag? Was that deliberate? Question mark, question mark, question mark. We always knew they were talking about bringing in amphibious capability the same as they had in Wargame Red Dragon, but, uh, hmm, they haven't mentioned it for a long time. Could also be that that was just a mistake and he didn't mean to put that in at all and they're not going to add amphibious units. Oh well, let's move on to the anti-air and think about that later. First, you get a good array of options compared to other armor divisions. So you get the TRM-2000 Tarask gun trucks with 20 millimeter AA guns, the AMX-13 DCA with twin 30 millimeter radar Mistral man pads, the Roland 2 and the Roland 3. The former has less range and accuracy being without radar, while the latter has more AP and accuracy but turns into a juicy seed target thanks to its active radar guidance. Hang on a minute, the Roland 2 that's already in the game was made radar. Because originally that Roland 2 was not radar and then they changed it. More question marks, Mad Matt, if you wrote this. More question marks. The Hilo category is rather light with some Gazelle Hots and Gazelle Cannons, which are obviously already in the game in other divisions. Air is the last category of the division and it's pretty good, with Mirage 5F and Jaguar ground attack planes, including Napalm and Cluster for the former, and Seed ATGM and HE for the latter. There will be several Mirage 3Es available, as well as the much more capable Mirage F1C200 flying top cover. And finally we get a few shots of the brand new map Rift, which is the Twilight map, the one that's set in the evening as it were. This is currently being tested out by the strike team, so hopefully we will get to see it in action soon. Usually they 
announce these things and then the strike team get permission to show it off. The battlefield is quite large at 83 kilometers squared and features two huge plateaus in the south and north. This elevated terrain runs along the center of the map, which is otherwise wholly flat and open with only a few defensive elements. Much like Cyrus, Rift offers extended sight lines with drastic reduction in potential choke points. And that's all they have to say. They say see you on the battlefield. And next week they'll be showing off the long-awaited debut of the British 1st Armoured Division. Beyond that there is also a little PS at the end of the dev blog which is a reward for those of you who stayed all this time. And that is that the West Germans in the 5th Panzer Division will be getting the Leopard 2A4. And the 79th Guard Division or the 79th Armoured for the Russians will be getting the T-80 UD in this next update. Now, as always, for those of you who don't have Instagram, they have been posting a few images over there, which I will stick up now. I'm not going to do the last month's worth because that would be completely bonkers. However, I'll do the ones from the last week or so, which have focused mostly on the new French equipment. So first up, we have this Jaguar A with the AS-30L missiles and its automatic tracking and laser integrated systems, aka the Atlas pod. Next up we have the AMS based chassis for the new 30mm radar anti-air weapon for the French. And following on from that we also have the anti-air cannon on the back of a truck. This is the 20mm auto cannon, I believe. Next up is the Sepcat Jaguar and it's an Anglo French jet attack aircraft. Can you spot the difference they say? For those who can't spot the difference, the difference is literally that they have a different little logo on them depending on whether they're the RAF or the French Air Force. Next up we get a shot of the FV-107 Scimitar Armoured Attract Military Reconnaissance Vehicle or Light Tank. It's hard to tell. I mean it's British so consider it having a lot of armour either way. Next up we get a shot of the Gazelle which we've seen in game before, that's nothing new. Next up we get an action pose of the AVRE Armoured Vehicle Royal Engineers breaking through under artillery fire with Westland Lynx support in the background. This is obviously an anti-infantry tank and as discussed in one of the previous dev blogs this is the last version of this tank chassis to actually be used in the military. All of the others had been retired by this point but they were still using it for the Armoured Vehicle Royal Engineers anti-infantry sort of big high explosive shells. Next up we get a shot of the AS-30L semi-active laser homing guidance. Basically it's a bloody big bomb. Next up we get a shot of the VBL with that little cannon on top and what looks like an ATGM as well. And probably even more tasty than that we get this shot of the AMX 30B2 Brennus. As it says the main battle tank of the French military with that reactive armor plating on it. Next up we get a shot of the AMX-30 EBG which again is going to be one of these ones which is anti-infantry. And then finally we get a shot of the T-80 UD doing a breakthrough. This is what they like to call their in-action post screenshots but that is a very nice tank. And that's everything for this week, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next week for the British.